most of our thoughts and feelings come from our past experiences. They come from our memories. In fact, your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of all the things you've learned and experienced to date. It's an artifact. And when you have an experience, when you're in the midst of an experience, all of your five senses plug you into the external environment. And as your brain is processing all of this vital sensory data, all of that information rushes back to the brain. And when it reaches the brain, it causes jungles of neurons to organize themselves into networks, to string into patterns, to reflect their interaction with their external environment. The moment those neurons organize into patterns, the brain makes a chemical, and that chemical is called a feeling or an emotion. And so experiences tend to create more long-term memories because it patterns or stamps or embosses networks of neurons into very specific patterns. And then the emotional quotient helps us to remember the event. The end product of experience, of course, is the emotion and it causes us to feel certain ways. You can, you can remember where you were on 9-11. You can tell me who you were with, what time of day it was, what you were doing, because whatever you were seeing in that moment or hearing in that moment changed how you were feeling. And the moment you felt altered or you felt differently, significantly, your brain perked up and you paid attention to whatever caused that. And that event in and of itself is called a memory. So then most of our thoughts and feelings tend to be within the neural circuitry of the past and the emotions of the past chemically. If you combine a thought and a feeling, a thought and a feeling, a thought and a feeling, and you have a series of good thoughts that are connected to a series of good feelings, that cycle of thinking and feeling creates what's called an attitude. If you have a series of negative thoughts that are connected to some pretty bad feelings, you'll say I have a pretty bad attitude today. So if how you think and how you feel creates a state of being, then attitudes are just shortened states of being. You can feel good in the morning, you can feel bad in the afternoon. If you take an attitude, an attitude, an attitude, and you begin to string attitudes together, when you combine an attitude, an attitude, an attitude, you start to form what's called beliefs. Now a belief is just a thought you keep thinking over and over again until you hardwire it in your brain. And because beliefs are based on past experiences, then the very boundaries of our beliefs are how we feel. And so when our beliefs get challenged, it typically doesn't feel right. I think there's a strong intellectual division going on in the world right now. Because some people are holding on to old paradigms and old beliefs. And look, if we're measuring normal, we're going to get normal. I mean, for years, for years, the idea that you couldn't grow new brain cells or couldn't change the brain in some way, that was a belief. And you know why? Because the scientist was that was doing the experiment was studying rodents in an unchanging environment. How could there ever be any new connections or new circuitry or new uh, brain cells if there's no new experiences? So I think in the age of information, in the age of technology, ignorance is a choice. And people are beginning to go, hey, I don't need my doctor to tell me about this. I can get on the internet and read it. Hey, I, I'm going to read a book on quantum physics and I'm going to ask the mysterious questions. I'm going to step outside of convention myself. So once you step outside of convention, you will be considered foolhardy or insane until you're able to produce some type of change. Then you're considered a saint, a holy man, a mystic, a genius, dare to be original. So I think the camp is divided in a very big way. That's the reason why I'm doing all the measurements, because I want I want people to understand that the person that healed themselves of that condition, that traumatic brain injury, I want to show you that their brain is better. They're not just saying, I feel better. No, they are better. I want them to see that. Now, they didn't do that with a drug. They didn't do that with a therapy. They didn't do that with anything except by thought alone. And they made those biological changes. So, to answer the question, the camp is divided in many ways. The old paradigms and then the new understandings and the new paradigms. And then there's this little kind of bridge in between. And we're only 
as good as the people that are willing to execute it. In other words, you got to be skilled at this, right? You got to be skilled at this. So if you're not skilled at it, we're not going to see any changes. So imagine 500 people or 450 people coming to an event, a workshop, and we are going to help them cross that river and to become conscious of their unconscious thoughts. You know, the ones that say, you can't, it's too hard, this will never happen, I can't change, I'm too this, I'm too old, I'm too that. Get beyond what their habits are, what they say unconsciously, do they complain, do they blame, do they make excuses, do they feel sorry for themselves, they're a program. They talk about others. Then look at their emotional states. Oh my God, I, I've been guilty for the last 30 years. I, I didn't even know I was guilty, it just felt like me. <laughs> I've been unworthy. I didn't even know I was unworthy. It just felt like who I am. And all of a sudden, they start becoming conscious of that. And then they start creating a new change for themselves. And one by one, you start m seeing these breakthroughs. You start measuring those breakthroughs. You have people on the stage talk about their breakthroughs, show their brain scan, show their heart rate monitor, show the energy change. And I guarantee you, just like an infection, can create a disease in a community. I believe that wellness can be as infectious as disease. And you start seeing traumatic changes happening in a small community of people who are outside of the conditioning of their environment.